So hello guys, what's up and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's me, your girl Barista Neze, and this is Nezeville. Some people say that many angels do not come wearing white robes. But I say that many demons do not come bearing horns and tails. Some come in well-tailored tuxedos, PhDs, and a charming personality. Today's story is the story of Dr. Olufemi Olaleye. It is the story of a vile crime by an unexpected perpetrator to the most undeserving victim. It is a classic case of a demon who came wearing a well-tailored tuxedo. Fifty-six-year-old Dr. Olufemi was a medical doctor and surgeon. He is the founder and the CEO of Optical Healthcare in Lagos. The award-winning doctor got his MB degree from the prestigious University of Ife. He proceeded to obtain his DFFP in the United Kingdom and then bagged an MBA from the Imperial College in London. He worked in the British National Health System for over a decade and then returned back home to start his own practice. He was a well-seasoned career man. Dr. Olufemi was married to his gorgeous wife, Remy. They have two amazing children together, a boy and a girl. Perfect family. They looked so beautifully great together. Going on vacations all over the world, enjoying the beautiful things of life, and Dr. Femi would constantly take to his Instagram page to showcase adorable photos of his wife and children. Much to the admiration of many, he was an ideal family man. Dr. Femi often described himself as a lover of God. He had on several occasions carried out projects in the church. Dr. Femi delivered an impactful CSR project in one of the biggest churches in Africa, the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And on several occasions, he will be invited to the pulpit, the podium, to preach the gospel. Dr. Femi was a staunch Christian believer. Dr. Femi, <laughs> oh, Dr. Olufemi Oladeye. He established the first ever and longest running breast and cervical cancer screening program for women in Nigeria. He partnered with several celebrities and notable figures to raise awareness for cancer. He was awarded the African Medical Doctor of the Year in 2015 by the Global Change for Africa in Berlin, Germany for his unparalleled work done in cancer awareness, advocacy and interventions in Africa. Very highly decorated doctor, he was selected by Mo Abudu's Inspire Africa and even the then Diamond Bank honored him as Niger's Diamond to recognize his charitable works. He was a famous, well-decorated, widely loved humanitarian. Dr. Femi was a lot of things in one, a perfect embodiment of you can have it all, career thriving, family thriving, relationships thriving. He was that man, loved, respected and looked up to by his community. But right underneath all of these honors and plaques and fame and wealth and popularity laid a man with a sick, twisted fantasy. A man who had eyes for little children. A man whose despicable lust will lead him down the road of self-destruction. Before we proceed, two things. If you're yet to subscribe, maybe you're seeing me for the first time, or if you have been watching me without subscribing, do hit the subscribe button, turn on your bell notifications, give this video a big thumbs up and stay glued because there is so much that you're gonna get from this channel. Secondly, as you drop your feedback and comments in the comment section, be mindful of the words you use. This is a very sensitive topic, so please do not use any triggering words that will be flagged by YouTube, else I'll be compelled 
to delete it. So Dr. Femi resided in one of the choice areas in Lagos State. He resided in a two-story building, three steps, comfortable lavish life with his wife Remy and their kids. Somewhere along the line, Remy's niece, that's his wife's niece, lost her dad and had no one to care for her. So she had to go live with her auntie Remy, Dr. Femi's wife. She was only about 14 years. One will imagine that the last thing on Remy's mind when she brought in her little tomboy niece was her own husband, her own educated, widely traveled, sophisticated husband having eyes for her little niece. First, she was only a child, not even well developed, as many people who have recounted seeing this girl testified to. Tomboyish a child just growing up secondly she was his wife's flesh and blood direct relation same blood flowing through their veins totally dr femi had a little daughter he had a girl so anyone could have imagined that he would have understood the delicacy the need to protect a girl child because he had won himself and besides as wealthy highly educated highly connected and well-traveled dr femi was even if he was to step out on his wife anybody would have imagined that he had a plethora of ladies available for him willing to get down and nasty with him even if he was married many of them wouldn't mind he had no reason to prey on his wife's niece but dr femi liked what he liked he was a perverted psycho. Dr. Femi's first attempt on his wife's little niece was sometime around March of 2020. He had drugged his wife. He put in some drugs in his wife's drink as she testified and then he snuck out from his matrimonial room into the bed of his wife's niece. He forced himself on her, taking away her innocence, stealing her virginity. And when he was done with his act, he snuck back into the bed where his wife laid, curled up right beside her, acting like nothing had happened. And once it started, it never stopped. Dr. Femi carried on with his atrocity from March of 2021 all the way to November of 2022, almost two years, getting worse and worse and more intense with every passing act, every passing encounter, it became a routine. He will knock his wife off almost to semi-comatose so she wouldn't be able to wake up throughout the night and then he will sneak into the little girl's room night after night. Insatiable he was. She was almost like a lab mice to him, experimenting everything with her from oral sex to pornography, name it. He practiced all sorts of lewd absurdities with his wife's niece right inside his matrimonial home with his wife laying on the bed knocked out to almost unconsciousness dr femi was having the time of his life enjoying the idea of eating his cake and having it but kama <laughs> kama you know what they say about kama every day for the thief but one day, one day for the owner. Now, it is unclear why Mrs. Remy's niece never confided in her and told her what was happening. It could be that she was scared. It could be that she had no sex education. It could be that she felt that nobody would believe her. It could be that she felt that she would get into trouble if she opened up to Mrs. Remy. It could also be that maybe she was threatened. Oh, you know the language. If you tell anybody, I will kill you. It may also be that maybe this niece of hers didn't have that close rapport with her. But this girl kept on taking and taking it until she could take it no more. She got to her breaking point and then she had to open up. She had to confide in Mrs. Remy's auntie, disclosing everything that she had been going through in the hands of Dr. Olufemi. From there, he keeps on going. And there was a day he disveged me. 
that very day it happened in the study it happened around 2 2 p.m at night when my auntie was already sleeping and Jordan was already sleeping he came in he woke me up and said he wants me to help him with coffee i brought him the coffee and then he pushed me to the branch chair in the study and then forced me and hazarded me i was trying to like trying to tell him that i don't want this because already we read he, he, he already asked if i was a virgin i said yes i want to this virgin when i'm in my husband house. and he told me that virginity is nothing that if in his hospital that if girls are pregnant or they are or they are this virgin he knows the way he's going to lie to their brain that virginity is nothing even a girl of 13 years old is not a virgin that that what is virginity he forced me he said to me even after i tried to even after i tried to to resist after that he didn't clean the blood and i was and i was really sad that day so i i don't really know what he did with the blood and he gave me this two tiny tablet for me to drink and then there was something he had on his hand which i can't remember what he said and he said mark this day the day you say anything about this you will die so whenever he, like, he keeps on doing this for one year and nine months now and each time he do you say hmm, the day you will say anything you will die every day he keeps on threatening with that and i've not been able to tell auntie about this when this information got to remy's ears oh my god her world came crashing she couldn't believe her ears she couldn't believe her eyes her heart bled and her eyes wept but after the stage of shock had passed remy knew that one of two things had to be done she had two options the first is what many women will do many african women many nigerian women this news must not get out you slut homewrecker they will fault blame and shame the victim their niece <laughs> you have come to break my home accuse the little girl of seducing their grown-ass husband beat her up and throw her out of the house send her packing they will rebuke her in the name of jesus christ silence her of course it couldn't be their husband's fault assuming you were not dressing that way looking that way being that way acting that way he wouldn't have done it they would typically protect the assailant and vilify the victim that would have been the typical thing to do the easier thing to do the african thing to do the virtuous wife thing to do come on protect your husband cover your husband cover his shame do not let any intruder break your home we've heard those words that would have been the easier option for mrs remy come on this was her husband of many years they have been through thick and thin together risen from nothing to something they had two kids together kids who loved their father kids who would have been hurt if their father was no longer in their lives that would have been the acceptable thing to do if she didn't want to be a single mother raising two children all alone being a single mother wouldn't have been attractive to her she probably didn't want a broken home she was used to wealth and affluence and vacations abroad used to the good life that this man gave her how could she give all of that up just because of one little cockroach she had nothing to lose by putting it on the child and saving her marriage allowing this non-entity break a home that she has suffered to build hell no that was one choice that she could have made and then there was the other choice the right choice the fair choice the true christian choice the noble choice the choice to protect the child and report her perverted husband the choice to go on the hard rocky pursuit of justice hard as it may have been and against all odds oh there were many of them remy chose to do the right thing the just thing the noble thing she reported her husband to the authorities and he was charged to court on counts bordering on defilement and penetration of a when news of Dr. Femi's escapades with his wife's niece 
made it out. Several other ladies, many of them, countless of them, in their numbers, began coming out, recounting their own experience with this same doctor. How he would come in guise of trying to check them and sexually abuse them in his office, touch them inappropriately, force his way into them right in the hospital, right in his office, on the medical doctors, medical practitioners, what do you call that bed, where patients are examined. Many women came out to recount on how Dr. Femi was in the habit of abusing his patients, regardless of their age. I felt the need to address this. This is directly to Dr. Femi Olale of Optimal Cancer Care Foundation. I feel that in a society where we cannot protect our children from predators, it is a society doomed to fail. I've known Dr. Femi for a number of years, a long time. We met an, at an event in Unilag uh, many, many years ago, and he had approached me to help in his advocacy for breast cancer screening for women and the rest. Uh, on the 9th of July, 9th or 10th of July, was another advocacy drive of his. Uh, so I went, as usual, in the pouring rain. You see, for me, when I give my word, it's something that I don't play with. I have integrity and I beat my chest about it. So in conversation, I just, ah, oh, how's your wife? And he was like, mm. So I said, what's wrong? And then he now said, we'll talk later when the room was clear. So he cleared the room and, and said, the nurses there should give us room. And so I asked, well, how's your wife? And he said, oh, they're separated. They're no more together. She had kicked him out of the house. I'm like, ah, that's serious. He, you know, and then he went, now went on to say, I would admit to you, Kate, uh, she set me up. I fell. I don't understand. I didn't understand what that meant. Uh, he fell, okay? So, I said, what happened? He said, oh, she brought a young girl into the house and he did stuff with her. I'm like, ah, Dr. Femi, now, wow, why would you, you know? Uh, of course, the first thing is blame his wife that she knew his weakness and she did that and blah, Just kicked him out. She even arrested him. I'm like, wow. This was before he told me he had had the thing with the girl. When, she, when he said he had been arrested, I'm like, how old the wife arrest you? So it was eight later when I now heard from him that he was, because he had sexual relations with, so he didn't even tell me it was the wife's niece. Didn't tell me she was underage either. But she said, tell me other things. And I'm like, okay, just take it easy. You guys try and resolve it. Make sure you try and see your children. I'm sure everything will be fine. And I'm like, ah. then the wife Remy reaches out to me and, oh, four hours on the phone we spent. She was telling me all sorts of, she sent me videos. Dr. Femi Olale had been molesting, disverging the seven year old girl. He had been doing that for a year and nine months. I'm not going to put a picture of the girl or the video. If you see her, she's just like, a tomboy. I, I, I wondered in my mind, what could drive a man like that who has a beautiful wife? And by the way, he's not bad looking as well. You are both together, you and your wife in the same house and you are... <sighs> Dr. Femi, I want to tell you that I'm a straightforward person and that you said what you said to me. The earlier you come to terms with what you have done, Submit yourself to the authority so that they can do the needful with you. You molested a 15-year-old girl. You disvirgined her. You threatened her and told her that if she told anyone, she would die. You are a doctor. You are meant to care. You took a Hippocratic oath, Dr. Femi. You know what you did. It is left for the authorities to do the needful. I am here. Should any clarification be needed? And I put it to you that I'm not lying. You know what you did. And it is a terrible thing and you should be ashamed of yourself. And so this case was picked up by the authorities and I cannot begin to describe to you the level of pressure, the level of threats put on Remy to step back and step down the case. There was this voice note that even made it out of Femi's mother admonishing Remy, the doctor's mother, that's her mother-in-law, admonishing her, that is her son the first person to go to bed with a little girl. What is it? It's enough. Let it go. But Remy wasn't shaken. She stood steadfast 
for justice. And so the matter went to court. When the case was opened in court, the niece herself testified against Dr. Femi. The officer at the gender violence office where the case was reported gave her own testimony and Dr. Femi's wife herself mounted the witness box to testify against her own husband. Dr. Femi and his defense lawyers tried to counter and rubbish the testimony of his wife, trying to create motive. They tried a certain that Dr. Femi's wife was after his properties, that she had always wanted her name in the properties that Dr. Femi owned. She was this, she was that, and that Dr. Femi had said that he wanted to divorce her, so she tried to set him up. Set him up, remember that word? Remember that this was the same word that he used when he was telling Kate Henshaw that he actually went to bed with somebody. But as at then, Kate Henshaw didn't know that this person he was talking about was his wife's niece. He said that his wife tried to set him up. It's like giving a herbivorous animal meat to eat. <laughs> it doesn't eat meat. So you cannot set it up with meat because it is not in its nature to eat meat at all. So if you are set up, if that even be the case, and you eat that thing, it is in your nature to do it. That was not set up. That was you exhibiting your true nature. So they came up with all sorts of theories about how Dr. Femi's wife was trying to snatch his properties and do this and do that. But the judge surpassed all those cheap blackmail and weighed the case on the quality of the evidence before it and after two years of trial only a few weeks ago dr olufemi olayedi was convicted and sentenced he was handed down the maximum punishment of life imprisonment so he would live out the rest of his life in jail a wise man once said that if a man has discipline and control over his third leg. 95% of his trouble has been solved. Looking at this case, I couldn't agree more. How the mighty has fallen. This is a man of pedigree, timber and caliber, a high flyer, very successful father and husband, a humanitarian who was loved and respected. I mean, the first course stated on his LinkedIn profile was children. He had a passion for children. That was what he portrayed. And this is how he ends it for himself. This is how he has brought shame and everlasting disrepute to himself, his family, his name. This is how he deems his bright lights. All his achievements, all his honor, his degree, his qualifications, gone to ruins, completely eclipsed by an indelible mark of shame. And the big question is, was it worth it? Her story was consistent. She never told any lie from the beginning. Everything she was saying from the very first day the case was reported at Antony Police Station and when we went to gender, her story was consistent. So we want to applaud her for not being induced, for not being allowing herself to be induced with money. You know, and this is one of the reasons why um, survivors don't want to talk. Because they try so many things, you know, to make them shut up. This was a few days to judgment. Huh. I think two days to judgment day was when this happened. Huh. Yes. So she was off, uh, offered uh, 400 uh, with the promise. With the promise that if you give the video changing the story, they will pay her the balance of 2.1 million. But her mother returns the money back to the person. We have the proof. Yes, and we have the affidavit in court. Oh, thank you. Right? Yeah. A girl who was raped by Femi Olaleye, a day after her boyfriend proposed to her and she committed suicide the following day, this justice is for you. For the girl he impregnated and, and beat her to death, this justice is for you. For the sick vulnerable girl he had sex with on that hospital bed, this justice is for you. This justice is for every survivor, the every woman in Nigeria that he took advantage of. For the women he was he was going to do cancer screening for and he did their videos. This this justice is for you. For the married women he raped.
and their husbands were waiting in the reception and the men did not know and these women cannot come out because of shame and stigma this justice is for you we stop our necks for you nigerians don't understand what we went through we were threatened we put our life on the line because we know that he had done so much atrocity to nigerian women to every nigerian woman that every nigerian woman that fell in the took advantage of i said this is victory for you yes and to all of you who think you can take advantage of nigerian women and girls and girls Boys. And the women who are taking advantage of boys, your day of reckoning is coming. coming. Your day of reckoning is coming. All you women taking advantage of younger boys, making them your sex slaves, your day of reckoning is coming. Men who take advantage of younger boys, your day of reckoning is coming. So yes guys, we have come to the end of today's video, today's expose, today's documentary on Dr. Femi Olayede, the MD CEO of Optical Healthcare. His rise to glory and how he cut short his own glory and his decline to shame. Do let me know what you think about this story down in the comment section. Some people have called the judge who gave a just and speedy judgment the hero. Some people have called the victim who stood up and spoke out at the risk of being disbelieved the hero. But for many people, I inclusive, the main hero here is none other but his wife who had so much to lose but still stood up for justice, still stood to do the right thing, still stood to take the un-African approach. May God reward her with the strength to carry on without him. If you're new here, if you're watching me for the first time, or if you've been watching without subscribing, do well to hit the subscribe button, turn on your bell notifications, give this video a big thumbs up, drop all your feelings down in the comment section, and stay glued because we have so much coming your way. It's me, your girl, Barista Neze, and this is Nezevale. I'll see you guys in my next one for now. Bye.